So that's the trend we're seeing in East and West Africa, not so much in Southern Africa. Why is that? Uh, good afternoon, Lorato. I think if you look at the currencies uh, and, and the sort of inflation pressures in Southern Africa, they're not as intense as we're seeing up in East Africa and certainly in West Africa, driven mainly by the food prices. I think food inflation is the biggest problem. Um, and again, I think what the central banks are doing are using these rates to try and curb inflation, but to also then offer higher yields possibly to some investor communities. Right. Okay. So let's focus on West Africa. Very aggressive uh, rate hike from the extraordinary MPC in Nigeria, you know, rates up 275 basis points. But we've seen the Central Bank of Nigeria hiking on numerous occasions over the last eight months or so. Um, why this kind of decisive action? Was it because of what we were seeing with huge dollar demands and a depreciating Naira or something else? I think the initial ones were based around the food inflation and inflation pressures. I think the last um, interest rate hike was based on the fact that they were running out of reserves. They couldn't continuously offer dollars at the auction. So they took immediate steps to try and put a, put a big squeeze on inflation to try and hike the rates to slow down the dollar demand that right. they're seeing. Um, to a large extent, it's worked. I mean, they cut down their FX position holdings down to 1% of capital. But because they've got stability back, they managed to move that back to 3%. Mm -hmm. Remember Ghana, we had no rate hike in the last uh, yeah. or, um, um, MPC. They came with no hike. So their economy is looking fairly stable. Okay, one of the biggest priorities for the CBN in Nigeria is really to try to get an inflow uh, into their uh, uh, fixed income securities and hence numerous other regulatory measures taken like lifting restrictions. In the last week also, we've seen them um, removing or changing the net open position. First it was 5%, then it was 1%, and then last Friday they said 3% and that's really to try to support shareholders getting themselves involved in the forex market. Will it work? I think we've seen some stability return to the Naira so I believe it has worked. I think the measures they've, they've used before we've often seen work in the past so I think they've reverted back to those measures you know going back to the old grounds to try and see if they can get it to work again mm -hmm. and to an extent that it has I think we've seen some stability come back to the Naira which is the key thing. The yeah. key thing for investors is around currency depreciation. If the currencies are stable, guys will invest. Yeah. If you invested into, into Kenya, you'd have lost 40%. Yeah. Most of that based on currency, currency movement. Okay, let's head over to Kenya now and find out what's going on there. Aggressive rate hike of 400 basis points. Um, repos done by the central bank on the forex markets. Interbank rates changed and numerous other measures in terms of how shareholders or how investors can enter um, the carry trade. Is it working? Because at the moment, inflation is definitely above the interest rates and that's a bit of a discrepancy there. Kenya is in a real difficult situation and I don't think they're helping their cause at the moment by these continuous changes, continuous statements coming out, the ambiguity, you know, leaving us like I don't know, looking like Mompara sitting down here deciding <laughs> what exactly we're going to do. Can we invest? Can't we invest? Can we borrow? Can't we borrow? They've introduced regulations onshore against onshore. They've introduced regulations on lending to offshore banks. Um, we can't borrow funds unless it's for a year. We were left at a point yesterday. We didn't even know if we could invest in the country. Now, when you make those policy statements, when you've got that level of confusion, added to the fact that you've got a weak currency, the investors are going to pull away from there. I think Uganda is looking pretty. Um, but we don't know if they'll adopt the similar moves. But I think, I think the, the policies that Kenya are introducing are not necessarily a bad thing. The way in which they actually get the message to the market is the problem. We left there unsure. We left there well, with... If, if you were advising the governor of the central bank and the minister of finance right now, if you had an audience with them, what would you suggest they do? I would, I would like to see them take the policies they want to introduce and make it clear statements to, to the public make clear statements to investors and certainly to the, to the market makers and the market players within the market as to what we can and cannot do. To make sweeping statements, you will not do this, and then say, but you can do a bit of that, just adds to confusion. We need to have a clear policy. I think on previous shows we've mentioned it before, clear policy statements. None of this leaving us sort of undecided as to what we can and cannot do. Okay, Tanzania has also hiked by 200 basis points. It's pushed up Treasury bills from 11% to 13%. We often don't talk about Tanzania as an interesting investment destination, certainly not in the capital markets. I think Tanzania, because you can't, as a non-resident, you can't go and buy any of, the, any of the government securities. It falls off the radar of where you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. But from our banking point of view, with, you know, with us now having opened up in, in Tanzania, with us having F&B branch in Tanzania, it is an important part to us. And yeah. again, our research guys are providing us with bundles of, of, of information. Right. And I think they, they are reacting to the East African community state uh, problems. I think if you look at the currency again, 
They've introduced these measures. Has it helped the currency? No. Mm -hmm. The currency is hit an all-time low. We're trading at 1750, 1755. Talk is of it going to 2000. So if you can introduce measures, the measures should be leading to some sort of result in the currency. The focus is on the currency side to try and actually then right. to and calm and those very quickly, We've said that in Southern Africa, basically, there's a wait and see approach. We may see rate hikes as of the second quarter next year. Not quite so in Zambia. A new government, uh, a central bank ruling that can only borrow quacha for a minimum period longer than one year. Also there, a sense of policy uncertainty. I think they're concerned against on the currency. They've intervened quite heavily to protect the currency. Um, but I think they've, you know, we can argue about the way they do it, but I think, I think they, they, their situation is a lot more stable. They influence a lot more from, from South Africa. I mean, all the imports are from here. So they import inflation from, from our side. Inflation on our side is pretty stable. Um, so they're not that badly affected along with Botswana. I think in East Africa, we've, got a, different, uh, we've got a different fireball building up there.